The world is running out of time. Energy grids are cracking. Oil wars are coming back. Nuclear, still dangerous. Solar, still weak. And fusion, still decades away. But deep inside China's desert, a silent machine just switched on. No smoke, no cooling towers, no uranium, just molten salt, and an element the West threw away like trash, thorium. It doesn't make bombs, it doesn't melt down, and it can power the future for 25,000 years. This is the reactor that changes everything. Chapter 1. Why Thorium? Let's turn back the clock. Long before uranium cast its shadow over the atomic age, there was another element, hidden in plain sight. Thorium, element number 90, naturally occurring, mildly radioactive, abundant. You can find it in the sands of India, the mountains of Norway, even in your backyard if you knew where to look. It was everywhere, and yet, no one cared. Not because it wasn't powerful, but because it wasn't dangerous enough. You see, in the 1940s and 50s, the world wasn't looking for peace. It was looking for leverage. It was racing toward a future built on bombs. Thorium couldn't be used for atomic weapons. It didn't fuel mushroom clouds. It didn't make men gods. And so it was dismissed. Too safe, too passive, too civil. But now, in a century haunted by climate collapse, war-driven oil prices, and fragile energy grids, that quiet safety, that forgotten potential, it's looking like a miracle. Thorium doesn't produce long-lasting nuclear waste. It can't be easily converted into bombs. It's more abundant than uranium by a factor of three. We threw it away because it wouldn't help us destroy. But now, we need it to help us survive. Chapter 2. A Lost American Dream Here's the cruel irony. The country that invented molten salt thorium reactors wasn't China. It was America. Back in the 1960s, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, a quiet group of physicists built something revolutionary. They created a reactor that didn't need water, didn't operate under pressure, and couldn't explode. It didn't even use uranium. They used thorium, and it worked. They ran it, proved it, perfected it. They even showed that it could shut itself down safely without human intervention. And then, they shut it all down. Why? Because the Pentagon didn't care about safe energy. It wanted bombs. Thorium couldn't deliver plutonium for warheads, and so the project was defunded. The blueprints were boxed, the knowledge locked away. What should have powered the planet was shelved in the name of destruction, the brightest innovation of a generation, smothered by its own government. But while America forgot, China remembered. They read the papers, they studied the patents, and they asked a single dangerous question. What if we finish what America started? Now, 60 years later, that forgotten American dream is being realized, not in Tennessee, but in the Chinese desert. Chapter 3. The Chinese Breakthrough They said it couldn't be done, that molten salt reactors were too complex, too experimental, too risky. But China, China didn't listen. They built it, deep in the barren vastness of the Gobi Desert, far from journalists, far from critics. A silent revolution was underway. The project, TMSR LF1, thorium molten salt reactor, liquid fluoride, first prototype. It doesn't look like much. No towering cooling stacks, no humming turbines or steel monstrosities. But inside that modest facility, history is rewriting itself. October 2023, the reactor reaches stable criticality. Not a theory, not a simulation. It worked, for real. June 2024, full thermal capacity achieved, two megawatts, enough to power thousands of homes with zero carbon emissions, zero meltdown risk. And then came the miracle. October 2024, the reactor refueled while still operating. Let that sink in. They added nuclear fuel to a running reactor without shutting it down. No risk, no drama, no Western headlines. A scientific impossibility turned reality. Behind this quiet miracle was one man, Dr. Xu Hongji, not a billionaire, not a politician, a visionary. With a team of just 140 scientists at the start, he turned a lab into a legacy. Now, over 400 experts work under him, all united by one mission, reclaim what the world threw away, 
But Shu didn't just copy America's 1960s reactor, he perfected it. Chapter 4 – How It Works Forget everything you know about nuclear power. No fuel rods, no boiling water, no towering chimneys belching steam into the sky. This is not your grandfather's reactor. This is molten salt technology. At its heart, a liquid core, seething, glowing, alive. Thorium dissolved into molten fluoride salt, burning at over 1,400 degrees Celsius. The fuel is the coolant. The coolant is the fuel. No pressure, no explosions, just pure, elegant engineering. Here's how it works. That scorching liquid flows in a tight, controlled loop. It transfers heat, naturally, to a secondary salt. That heat spins turbines, generating power. No water, no steam, no chance of a Fukushima-style meltdown. But what happens when something goes wrong? Here's where Chinese brilliance kicks in. Underneath the core lies a frozen salt plug, kept solid by nothing but a simple fan blowing cool air. If the power fails, if the system collapses, if sabotage or disaster strikes, the fan stops, the plug melts, and the molten salt? It drains instantly into underground tanks. The reaction dies automatically. No human error, no emergency crews, no radioactive nightmare. It's not just safe, it's fail-safe by design. This isn't innovation, it's a revolution in reactor logic, and it's working right now in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Chapter 5 – Efficiency and Waste Thorium doesn't just change how reactors run, it changes what they leave behind. Let's start with efficiency. Traditional nuclear reactors, those powered by uranium, barely scratch the surface. They convert only 30 to 33 percent of heat into electricity. That's like burning gold to light a candle. But molten salt reactors, they push past 45 percent thermal efficiency, with some designs aiming even higher. That means less fuel, more energy, smaller footprint, lower cost. But the real miracle is in the waste. Because with thorium, waste doesn't last tens of thousands of years like uranium. It doesn't poison the earth for generations. It doesn't create a toxic legacy for your grandchildren's grandchildren. Thorium waste is dangerous for just 300 to 500 years. Still serious, still deadly, but containable, manageable, human scale. And here's where it gets wild. These molten salt reactors, they can consume nuclear waste. Yes, burn the old sins of uranium reactors. Take the radioactive leftovers, feed them back into the salt, let the reactor devour them, neutralize them. Imagine that, a machine that doesn't just power the future, it cleans the past. It's like turning garbage into lightning. 6. China's Energy Advantage China isn't just building reactors, it's building an empire of energy. Buried deep beneath the mountains of Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Sichuan lie vast deposits of thorium, so vast, in fact, that they could power China for 20,000 to 25,000 years. Let that number sink in. Not decades, not centuries, but millennia. While the West drills for oil, while Europe argues over wind farms, and while America debates uranium pipelines, China is digging up forever fuel, and it's doing it with quiet, focused precision. These aren't just reserves, they're resilience. Every kilogram of thorium mined is one less barrel of foreign oil, one less shipment of liquefied natural gas, one more step toward total energy independence. But here's where it gets strategic, because once China perfects its modular molten salt reactors, compact, portable, scalable, it can deploy them anywhere, rural towns, military outposts, desert bases, island grids, all humming with power. No grid, no fuel truck, no emissions. And as the rest of the world stares down energy crises, blackouts, and fuel shortages, China will flip a switch and the lights will stay on. Not just energy security, energy supremacy. And in a world where energy equals power, that's the throne. Chapter 7 – Global Impact This isn't just about China, it's about the entire planet. Because energy is power. And whoever controls the power controls the future. While the West builds walls of regulation, while democracies stumble through red tape and debates, China is building energy diplomacy, not with oil pipelines, not with coal shipments, but with thorium. Compact, clean, contained. Imagine this, a small island nation struggling with blackouts signs a deal with China, and within months, 
A thorium reactor arrives by ship. Plug and play power. No uranium. No oil. No dependence on the West. Or a Belt and Road partner in Africa. Gets a mobile molten salt reactor the size of a shipping container. Running for decades on local thorium ore. This is China's new export. Not smartphones. Not steel. Self-sustaining energy. And with every contract signed, every reactor deployed, comes influence long-term partnerships, strategic alliances, and guess who sets the rules? Not Washington, not Brussels, not Tokyo, Beijing. This isn't just about power grids, it's about geopolitical dominance. While the West argues over green energy targets, China is delivering green energy dominance, one reactor at a time. Chapter 8. The West Delay Once upon a time, the West led everything, science, innovation, energy revolutions. It was American scientists who birthed the molten salt reactor, American labs that built the first prototypes, American engineers who dreamed of safe, small, efficient nuclear power. But somewhere along the way, they stopped dreaming. The Cold War ended, the urgency faded, and the fire dimmed. Today, what's left? Committees, hearings, stalled projects. Thorium still lives in white papers, not reactors. The brilliant minds at Oak Ridge, their work was shelved, their warnings ignored. Even tech giants like Bill Gates, with all the money and minds in the world, still bet on uranium, still build within old frameworks, still wait for permission. And while the West waits, China builds. It's deja vu all over again. Like solar panels, first researched in California, now manufactured in Shenzhen. Like high-speed rail, pioneered in Japan and France, now perfected by Beijing. The West innovates, then hesitates, then imports what others dared to build. And now, thorium might be next. Chapter 9. What comes next? The future isn't coming. It's already here. And China is two steps ahead. While the world debates, China deploys. Plans are underway for a 10-megawatt reactor by 2030, 10 times more powerful than today's prototype. A leap from pilot to platform and by 2040, a fleet of 100 megawatt modular reactors, not buried underground, not chained to city grids, but built like shipping containers, scalable, stackable, portable, dropped into deserts, flown to islands, deployed on remote military bases, wherever there's sunlight and silence. Thorium hums. These aren't just machines, they're energy outposts, pop-up power stations, globally exportable, locally unstoppable, each one a symbol of sovereignty, each one a diplomatic tool. Because when China sells you your power plant, they're not just sending electricity, they're sending engineers, training staff, negotiating access, and writing the next chapter of global influence. Thorium reactors will become the new oil wells, but this time the pipelines run through Beijing and the nations powered by thorium. They won't just owe money, they'll owe allegiance. Chapter 10, the final switch. Every century has a moment, a single decision that reshapes the planet. In the 20th century, it was oil. In the 21st, it might be thorium. And China, China didn't wait for permission. It didn't beg for consensus. It simply built the future. While the West sinks into red tape, China powers ahead with molten salt clarity. This isn't about uranium anymore, or climate change, or economics. It's about who controls the switch, because energy is power. And power decides everything, from factories to satellites, ships to smart cities, data centers to drones. The side that controls energy controls destiny. So the question isn't whether thorium works. We know it does. The question is, will your nation control its own future or lease it from someone else? Because when the lights go out, when the grid collapses, when energy becomes the next battleground, the nation that flips the switch wins. And China already flipped it. Presented by Future Structure Official. Where the future isn't guessed, it's built. If you found this deep dive into China's thorium revolution eye-opening, hit that like button and subscribe to Future Structure Official for more cutting-edge videos on the future of energy and technology. Don't forget to ring the bell to stay ahead of the curve, because the future won't wait. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Are you optimistic about thorium's role in global energy? Or do you see other technologies stealing the spotlight? 
Let's talk.